2009 15-inch MacBook Pro left and right speaker replacement. Please note that the left speaker is located under the logic board and the right speaker is located underneath the DVD drive. Make sure that the MacBook is shut down and go ahead and flip it over. We'll be removing 10 Phillips head screws. Remove the three long Phillips head screws first. Now starting in the top left and going around the contour of the MacBook, remove the seven short Phillips head screws. Once all screws have been removed, go ahead and remove the rear panel. Right speaker and subwoofer removal. Begin by locating and tracking down the eyesight and the Wi-Fi cable. Disconnect it from the logic board. Remove the three Phillips head screws securing the drive in place. Disconnect the drive. Lift the drive at an angle bottom first and it should come right out. Disconnect the hard drive and speaker cables from the logic board. And peel back the hard drive cable. Disconnect the speaker cable. Remove the four Phillips head screws securing the speaker and the subwoofer. You can unscrew them, but leave them in place. This will make it easier. If it's too difficult, go ahead and remove the entire screw. You can lift up and remove the speaker. Right speaker and subwoofer installation. Insert the speaker into position. Secure the four Phillips head screws. Reconnect the speaker and the SATA cable. Insert the DVD drive in at an angle. Drop it into its socket. Secure the three Phillips head screws. Reconnect the drive data cable. Reconnect the iSight and Wi-Fi cable to the logic board. Be careful when making this connection as it's fragile and can be damaged. Battery removal. Remove the three tri-wing or pentalobe screws depending on your model. They're located in the exact same place on both types of models. Gently lift up the battery, but it's still connected to the MacBook, so be careful. Disconnect it from the logic board. Logic board removal. Remove the trackpad cover first. It's attached with two Phillips head screws. Loosen the screws and remove the cover. Remove the right fan. It's attached with three T6 screws. Leave the screws in place. Unscrew them. Lift up the fan and disconnect it from the logic board. Remove the left fan as well. It's attached the same way. Three screws. Leave them in place. Disconnect it from the logic board. Leaving the screws in place allows you to track them easy. Inspect the 10 connections on the logic board. 
familiarize yourself with them. We'll go over each one individually. Disconnect the keyboard backlight. It has a little lever that has to be pressed up. Then you can just pull out the cable. Make sure to push up that lever. Disconnect the Wi-Fi cable. It just comes right out. Disconnect the DVD drive. Disconnect the speaker. Disconnect the SATA hard drive. Disconnect the trackpad. Just pops right up. There's a lever on the keyboard connection. Pull up on the lever and then pull out the keyboard. Disconnect the battery life indicator. Pull up an unlocking mechanism and disconnect the LVDS cable. You can just pull it out after unlocking it. Be careful with this connection as it's very fragile and can be damaged easily. Remove the 7 T6 screws securing your logic board in place. You can review this segment to make it easier to track the screws. Push away any cables and pull up on the logic board. It still has one connection in the back, so pull it up gently we'll be flipping it over. Once you flip it over, disconnect the DCN power board. This is the last connection. The logic board is now free. Left speaker removal. Go ahead and remove the safety guard tape that's covering the connection. Remove the two Phillips head screws securing the speaker to the logic board. Lift up the speaker. Disconnect the speaker and the microphone from the logic board. You can now pry out the microphone out of the speaker. Left speaker installation. Insert the microphone into the speaker. Reconnect the microphone to the logic board. Now reconnect the speaker to the logic board as well. Secure the two Phillips head speaker screws. Reattach the guard tape. Logic board installation. Connect the DCN power board first. At an angle, insert the board and connections to the right first. Push away any of the cables and lay down the board. It's okay if some cables are trapped. We'll be pulling them out. Take out tweezers and push away any of the trapped cables. Go over all of them, make sure nothing is trapped. There's 10 connections. Nine connections if you exclude the battery. Install the seven T6 logic board screws. They're relatively the same size, so any screw should fit into any hole.
snag the keyboard back leg first. Make sure that the lever is up. Push in the connection and lock the lever. Install the left fan. Since we left the screws in, this should be fairly easy. Put it into its socket and secure the three T6 screws. Connect the fan to the logic board. Make sure that that cable was not trapped when you put in the fan. Install the right fan. Again, make sure that the connection is out and is not trapped under the fan. Secure the three T6 screws. Reconnect the fan to the logic board. We can now connect the Wi-Fi cable. Connect the DVD drive. Clicks right in. Connect the speaker. It also clicks right in. Connect the SATA cable. Connect the trackpad. Make sure all these connections are firmly in. Connect the keyboard. Make sure that the lever is up when you insert the keyboard into the socket. Then push down on the lever to lock it in. Connect the battery life indicator. Connect the LVDS cable now. Make sure that the locking mechanism is up. Be careful as this port is very fragile. Lock it in with the locking mechanism. <laughs> Install the trackpad shield. Screw it in with two Phillips head screws. Battery installation. Reconnect the battery to the logic board. This might be a little difficult to do. You can peel back the battery connection cord from the battery about two inches to make this easier. Insert the battery into the socket after connecting it. Install the three tri-wing or pentalope screws depending on your model. Install the rear panel. Install the three long Phillips head screws first. Now the seven short Phillips head screws.